Joining us right now, Senior Senator from the great state of Texas, it's Senator John Cornyn. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Chad. Good to be with you. I'm doing great. Well, uh, glad to have you on the program. Uh, let, let's start off with, um, I, I guess, one of the, the big news items of the day and uh, maybe a carryover from President Trump's trip overseas, and, and that is the Paris Climate Accords. Uh, there's some news out today, according to uh, sources. You know, you always love the blind sources that are out there, the <laughs> unnamed sources that uh, President Trump will pull the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Accords. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts were that President Obama did something that was uh, basically illegitimate uh, in trying to use executive orders in order to bind us to an international treaty uh, in violation of the United States Constitution. Only the Senate has the authority to ratify a international treaty, and uh, President Trump is well within his rights to get us out of this. If this is something that is serious enough uh, to warrant uh, our attention, then it's something that we ought to be debating and voting on in the United States Senate. So so you would be in, in favor of him pulling the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Accords or Paris Climate Agreement? I would. I would, because I think President Obama clearly exceeded his authority in, uh, in agreeing to it, and it has really no legal effect on the United States anyway. Uh, how did you think his trip went overall? Uh, his, his first big foreign uh, trip overseas started started in Saudi Arabia, and uh, you know I, I thought that uh, he did very well uh, representing the United States. I know a lot of people in the media wanted uh, the president to fall flat on his face. Uh, I, I thought he did a bang up job. I do too. I do too. I thought. You know, the message that he was conveying both by his presence and by his words was that American leadership is back in the world. And if there's one thing that uh, encourages uh, the, the tyrants and the bullies and the dictators around the world, it's American weakness. And that was unfortunately what had been conveyed in uh, the previous administration, that we were withdrawing from the world. And so uh, I was very happy to see um, see the message that President Trump conveyed, particularly to our Gulf allies like Saudi Arabia, uh, their their uh, mortal enemy is the uh, is Iran, which happens to also be the number one state sponsor of international terrorism and responsible for the death of uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, Syrian civilians and millions of displaced refugees. So I thought his message was very good, reassuring our uh, ally and principal ally in the region, Israel, and then going to Brussels and telling the NATO allies that, yes, uh, we're going to stick around and be part of NATO. It's important in terms of a counterweight to Russia, but you're going to have to pay your fair share. And do you think that was an appropriate message uh, from the Absolutely. president? Absolutely. You know, the, uh, the countries in Europe are more than happy. They've got their own political challenges. Uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is Russia is on the march, and uh, – NATO, this is a test for NATO, and I think the president was entirely within his rights, and uh, it's important to have uh, skin in the game by our NATO allies, and they've agreed to 2% of uh, GDP for uh, joint uh, security purposes, and they ought to uh, be held to that. Visiting with U.S. Senator John Cornyn, let's uh, get back stateside. Uh, you've got summer recess that that, uh, that that is coming up soon. There was an article, I believe, out of Politico today that said time is running out for President Trump and legislative victories, uh, at least in 2017. Uh, is that true? And where are we on maybe the number one issue that, that's been on Americans' minds, and that is health care? Well, it's, uh, it's May the 31st, and uh, we're not running out of time. <laughs> we do need to get take care of our business. And I think um, you've mentioned health care, and that's uh, certainly uh, front and center in the United States Senate, something we're going to have to get resolved here in the next uh, few weeks. And I, I expect that we will. I just don't think we have any choice, Chad, because Obamacare is in meltdown. People are seeing double-digit increases in their premiums. Actually, they've gone up 105% uh, since I think 2013 in the individual market. That's people who don't get their health care through their employer. And uh, it's in meltdown. So even if Hillary Clinton were president, we'd be revisiting uh, this uh, failed Obamacare experiment. 
But we need to get premium premiums down. We need to create a robust, competitive, free market for insurance so that people can buy what they want at a price they can afford. And then I think we also have a tremendous opportunity to reform one of the largest entitlement programs uh, without actually cutting Medicaid, but actually reducing the rate of growth. Unfortunately, some people in Washington, D.C. call that a, a cut when you're spending more money year after year on Medicaid. But what we need to do is cap this to a reasonable cost of living index and uh, get, get it back on a fiscally sustainable path. Leader McConnell had said earlier, I think this was about a week or two ago, that uh, in, in response to a question of how do you get to 51 votes or 50 votes, 51, 52 votes, he said, I don't know, but we're going to get there. Um, <laughs> How difficult is it for the, for, because you've got senators like Senator Rand Paul, Senator Mike Lee, and then you've got other senators who, you've got senators who are all over the page, just like you had House members who are all over the, uh, the, 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 the line here. So how do you get to 51 votes on repealing and replacing Obamacare if we're going to go through reconciliation? Well, Chad, we've only been debating our, uh, this for seven years now, and there are all sorts of great ideas from Republicans on repealing and replacing Obamacare, but we can't vote on all of them. We need to come up with a consensus bill. And one thing I'm sure of, it won't be perfect, but if it's better than Obamacare, I think we will have fulfilled our promise that we made election after election to repeal and replace Obamacare. So, as I said, it's in meltdown right now. We'd be revisiting even under a President Hillary Clinton. We've made repetitive promises, and it's important to keep your promises. And we just need to, um, to need to help uh, those who are finding themselves priced out of, uh, of health insurance and who are seeing insurance companies pull out, and they really have no effective choice when it comes to buying health coverage for their families. So we're going to have to get it done. We don't have a lot of room, uh, as you point out, 52 senators. We need 50-plus the vice president at minimum. And uh, I'm uh, I'm determined to get there, Senator. I just have a few more questions for you before I let you go, and uh, one more on on, on health care. Do you have a timeline? Do you think that that we can get a repeal and replace of Obamacare done by the end of 2017? Oh, absolutely. We'll get it done by the end of July at the latest. That sounds good. That, that's a good timeline for everybody to have. Great. Um, l- let me ask you about a comment that the president, I guess, tweeted out yesterday, and that was about the number of votes in the Senate to pass legislation. The president saying, hey, you know what? It, it's time just to go on a 51-vote majority. Uh, I, I guess this would be the nuclear, nuclear option, maybe, <laughs> uh, for the U.S. Senate. Uh, I, I know that Leader McConnell has pushed back against that in the past when it's been brought up by members of the press. I think Mike Lee uh, pushed back against it yesterday. What are your thoughts on on the nuclear, nuclear, nuclear option? Well, of course, we since we are handling both health care and tax reform under the budget reconciliation process, we can do that with 51 votes. And so I think what the president's talking about is perhaps other legislation in the future. But my experience in the Senate, Chad, has been that uh, – Someday, sometime you're in the majority, sometimes you're in the minority. When you're in the minority, you want to be able to stop really bad legislation, and we've been able to do that even in the minority using the 60-vote cloture requirement uh, by stopping tax increases, cap-and-trade legislation, and a card check, which would have uh, unionized uh, all private employers in the country. So uh, I just think we need to take a longer view here, and uh, in the short term, We'll be able to get health care and tax done uh, with 51 votes, and we just need to uh, work harder. And uh, I think if we get that done, I think people are going to uh, be happy with uh, our 2017. Before I let you go, what is something that, that you or Senate Republicans are working on right now that maybe isn't getting the attention that it should and you want people to know about? Well, we continue to do some work, important work, on uh, anti-human trafficking legislation. And last year, um, I was pleased to have sponsored uh, the uh, more uh, bills that were signed into law, even under President Obama, than any other senator. And that's thanks to great staff and, and great teamwork. But uh, we, did, we passed the anti-human trafficking law, 99-0 to 0 in the Senate. It was signed into law. 
And we're doing some additional work in that area to make sure that uh, victims of human trafficking, typically a young girl between the age of 12 and 14 who's been taken into what is considered modern-day human slavery, to give them a chance for uh, rescue and to heal. And I think that's uh, a noble cause. Wonderful. Uh, Senator Cornyn, appreciate your time today, and uh, I'm sure we will visit uh, as the uh, process continues in Washington, D.C. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. That's U.S. Senator John Cornyn here on the Chad Hasty Show. So look for health care in July, a repeal and replace bill from the Senate in July. Good to hear uh, that. We needed a timeline. Thanks to Senator Cornyn for joining us on the Chad Hasty Show.